Hello, a quick introduction to the Micros DH2. Um, to build this model, you're going to need a plan. As to the best of my knowledge, there's no kit available. Now, how do you get hold of the plan? Well, that's quite easy. I'm just about to show you now on the laptop and um, how to download the plan, how to print it, and then it's up to you then to put it together. So all you have to do is type in Mike Roach, DH2, that's M-I-K-E, space, capital letter, R-O-A-C-H-D-H-2. Press search and the very top line you see, I'll search for Mike Roach, found the following free plans. So the plan is for free. This takes you to outer zone and there you'll see the DH2. Uh, Airco DH2 Mike Roach plan details you just click on that and there are the plans now you'll have an opportunity uh, on this page to hit the download button let's get rid of those adverts and there's a bit of a write-up and you'll see photographs of what it's supposed to look like now this version has no ailerons but if you come down this version has ailerons okay so you can put ailerons on it and actually highly recommend them doing it so it give you a write-up and you have a chance to uh, make comments if you want to so you'll take it to a, a thread and uh, there you'll see people who built it and uh, you know how to go about doing things if you need to if you get a bit stuck all right so you get your plan what next so you've made a folder, you've put your DH2 plans in there, you click on it and you'll see there's two full pages. Now, you will need um, Acrobat Reader or some other software to be able to print this off as a map. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you come to the print bar, press print and it'll say size okay click on that and choose that it's not you know over the settings how you want to be and you want poster and you'll see here what it's going to look like on each page so they have these lines okay and that's what you want you want the scale to be 100 percent so you get a like for like and this will print out one two three four five 15 pages and they all come out and then you have to line up the lines sellotape it together and you'll end up with a full size plan and that's how you do that once you've got your plans and you sellotape them together they'll come out there's two different plans this size okay so they're quite big um, i think this is a one size I'm not entirely sure. So this is your bottom sheet. Put that down to one side. And there's your top sheet. Okay. Don't let the sellotape put you off. It's just how we do it. And that's how you get your plans for your DH2. Uh, it's then up to you to look at the plans, make a cutting list. In other words, what um, what would you need and uh, parts etc um, and I will be uh, giving all that information out uh, as, as we go along uh, I'm going to be using a propeller which is um, 9 by 4.5 prop I'll be using a 1000 kVA uh, motor I'll be using a 20 amp speed controller and I'll probably be using a 2 cell battery 7 7 volts 7.1 or whatever it is uh, and we'll go from there because you'll find that not all sizes are on there well I'm going to tell you all the sizes as I go along because I've got to work it out myself anyway and uh, you'll see it and it become hopefully easier and I'm hoping that people will catch on and uh, start making this because it's a, it's a terrific model so uh, yeah there you go there's your introduction. Wheels. Okay. 
there's a finished wheel. Uh, ignore the cap, that's just practice because it's not really worth me making the cap or the flare, if you like, until the wheels actually go on the finished model. But I want the wheels ready because at some point I'm going to I'm going to want them. And also, I, I like to make things like this early, like the go in the machine gun, etc. Because it's little things that I want to want to do, get it out of the way, and then I can just concentrate on the, on the whole thing proper. Now, the dimensions are not marked on the plan. So, grab yourself a piece of paper and a pen. Pause this while you do it, and go off and get them. And when you come back, I'll give you all the dimensions. So, let's begin. Okay. The gauge, the wire gauge, is not mentioned. So let's start with that. This gauge of wire is 332. In metric, that is uh, 2.38 millimetres. You can buy a 2.3 uh, drill bit. I know because I've got one. You get them on eBay. Failing that, you can get a 332 drill bit. You can't buy them from a shop unless you go to a very, very established store that you can trust. But you won't get them a place like B&Q or Tool Station or Screwfix. You have to order those online. So not only have I ordered a 332 drill bit, I ordered a set. Um, I did have a set. I don't know what I do with it. Put it somewhere. I can't find it. Anyway, so your axle is a 332 or in millimetres, 2.38 millimetres. Okay, how do I know that? Well, because you, you now have a, a choice. You can either make the wheel or you can buy them commercially. You can't buy this size of one ninth scale. I've tried, I have tried. Um, but you can get somewhere like 80 millimeters or you know 75 millimeters or no not 75 65 millimeters you can't get it in a in a in a, in a ninth scale you get it in eight scale and i think you can get it in 10 scale but you can't get it in ninth scale so you have to weigh it up now if you buy a ready-made wheel and there's nothing wrong with doing that um i don't think cliff's gonna do that he's not he's not that type of guy i'll be surprised if he does Anyway, um, you need, with the tyre on and everything, on or around 70 millimetres, which is 7 centimetres. For our American friends, uh, that's, well, this actual tyre, the complete thing here is, is 3 inches, but actually 70 millimetre comes out as uh, 2 and 3 quarter inches. So it's not desperate that you need to get it 70 mil to somewhere near. And that both wheels are the same diameter. Right. Hope you're writing all this down. So, 70 mil diameter, 332 gauge wire. The rest of the undercarriage, I bought some uh, two millimeter. You can work that out in Imperial yourself. Now, how do you make it? Well, the other thing you're going to need is some neoprene. 10 millimeter neoprene. The, this is used, used by carpenters to put um, a seal round cupboard door so when you, you close the cupboard door it, it doesn't go bang and it's just a little seal. But it's expensive. This cost me £12, which is roughly $20 uh, US. And it's round, you, gotta, you, you just put in neoprene, you'll see it come up. Normally it's square, but this is you can get it round and it's 10 millimeters. So write that down. Okay, so let's start with the hub. Uh, I've only done this as an example. 
it's just a piece of paper. I will make this out of card. It's just for the sake of the video. Uh, I won't bother making this until right to the very end. But being as we're doing the wheels, we're going to do it all in one go. Right, diameter, 68 millimetres. This is not on the plan, 68 millimetres. And all you've got to do is cut it out, slit it, put a bit of sellotape, we call it sellotape, I don't know what you, you call it in uh, the United States or Canada, uh, but we call it sellotape, so if you're wondering what that is, it's not a contraceptive, it's sticky back plastic, as they say on Black Peter, uh, and that's 68 mil. And then you just slide it together slightly, put a bit of tape the other end, um, CA this end, I've used a, a red pen, probably unsuccessfully, I think I need to use a pencil just to put those sort of like spoke effect into it, um, and that's, that's your flaring hub. Okay, your neoprene, your neoprene, got two lengths of 25 centimetres, and 25 centimetres for our American cousins is, let's see if I can work this out, just under 10 inches okay better to cut it too long than too short you can always cut it down to make it fit better because you know trying to get everything exact usually on stuff like this is a bit hit miss as long as they pair up you haven't got a problem okay and now you're going to want an outer hub and an inner hub so this is 0.8 ply, work it out if we're imperial, 0.8 millimetre ply. I've circled two hubs. These are the outer hubs. Okay, now these are 58 millimetre diameter. You then get some 4 mil balsa. This is actually 5 mil balsa because I haven't got any 4 mil, but it doesn't matter. Personally, I think it's probably better using 5mm. That is 52mm diameter. The process is the same for both. What we're going to do, well, I jigged out the circle, both of them. Hasn't got to be exact. Then I drilled a 2mm hole through the hub. Why am I doing that? Because I know that, that is. 2.38 so I want the hub to be slightly smaller if I can manage it so I don't make the hole too big I can make the hole bigger if I want to I can't make the hole smaller yeah does that make sense okay so that's 58 millimeters that's 52 millimeters what I did then I put a two millimeter hole in and I got myself a two millimeter nut and bolt with some washes on it. I took both sides, put the nut and bolt through the middle. I then got my drill, put that in the front of the drill, rotate it, make sure you get it nice and tight. Okay, then I got some 120 grit and I just went round the sides until I hit the pencil line evenly. All the way around then both sides of that hub are the same size you can't go wrong did exactly the same thing for the inner side of the hub exactly the same process so then you'll end up with something let me just put that away for a minute you'll end up looking something like that so you've got a sandwich like a biscuit okay so the inner part is 52 mil outer part is 58 mil okay this is 10 mil this is 68 millimeters this is 10 millimeters diameter you cut it 25 centimeters long okay you offer it up and you want to cut it a little bit smaller than the diameter of that so it sort of naturally becomes like an um, elastic band so it goes in tight it's better to have it slightly too long at first 
so you can cut it down. I can cut this down, it's not a problem. Just cut it in half and then just take maybe to five mil off just to make it seat better onto the hub. Once you're comfortable with that, if you can get this back into the drill, uh, just groove, put a groove in the middle of that so the bottom of the tyre can seat neatly onto the hub. And by this time, you should have, the drill bit that you've ordered should have come through the post because you can't buy them from the shops. Okay, and you'll end up with that. And then eventually at the end, we've got cardboard hub, that'll go on, and you just glue that on. Obviously, um, when you before you put this on, put some Vaseline on the um, on the hub. Uh, put a, a washer on, or a bead, sewing bead, and then uh, epoxy that in. Then put this cap on, and that is ready. I just like to get these things out of the way. Uh, same thing with the gun. I just like to get them made out of the way. I know they're done, and if I want them to size anything up or put in place temporarily to see if I what I need to do next the parts are there okay so that is your wheels right I'm going to put the first to one side for the minute and I'm going to concentrate just for now on the undercarriage now you'll be very unlikely to bend this first go uh, but all you got to do this is 1 16th wire I've got a thicker wire for the uh, the axle um, it doesn't need to be too tough uh, to be honest but what we have what you got to do is check that measurement there okay against f4 so I'm making f4 61 mil so if that's 60 mil, that's probably all the better, but that's at 61 mil. And I've checked it against the drawing, and you know, that's not bad. But you must remember that when you come to bend the wire at the bottom, you need at least a minimum of 10 mil to bend up this way. So when you make the opposite side, they're opposite, and you, you solder them together. Now, how do I bend them? Well, I'll show you. There's your wire bender. You put it in a vise. If you haven't got one, get one. You can, with this kind of size wire, you can use pliers. Uh, but this is a, a lot easier and uh, more accurate. Now, I've measured out where 60 mil is. Okay, and then you grab your handle. This is a, an Allen screw. Uh, this is just to give it equal opposite pressure and there is a uh, You put the hole through there and that bit there just goes against the wire And it's quite easy really You see and you just bend it Roughly how you need it Okay, and then You bring up Your 60 mil and don't forget this is back a bend that in consideration okay now before you bend it get it level now I'm going to get it level by eye now there put the tension on there you go yep. okay and then if you need to you just bend it back until you get it to the right shape so you see that so that's the correct width so that's okay and you just bend them back equally I have quite strong hands so it's not a massive problem for me Now, 
now. I've forgotten what I did with the other one now. <laughs> Doesn't matter. They're more or less going to be the same anyway, so uh, we'll take that to outer. That's going to come in a bit. One's got to come in, one's got to go out. Okay, that's spot on. That one wants a mill. Yeah, there you go. So, all I've got to do now is mark off 10 millimeters at the bottom bend them up and solder them together well here we are um, the undercarriage now um, again I'm probably going to gloss over things a little bit but you know I'm gonna do my best there's a lot to this model you know it doesn't look much but there's a lot to it well as you know I previously made the wheels so I won't go over that right now um, what I like to do is make a little wooden jig uh, you know this this I, I use it for all sorts of things you know but um, it was quite easy to bend the uh, actually I did this in one go I, I don't know how I managed to do it in one go I think it was just a fluke just one of those rare occasions when all the stars are all lined up um, so I've used uh, a two mil music wire for the actual axle. Um, I've used clamps on the one sixteenth music wire, and the longest time was taken to. I've used copper wire out of uh, electrical cable. This is one mil. I. I I couldn't get it small. I actually wanted, you know, uh, 0.5 millimeters. But anyway, I used the one. It's pretty soft stuff. And the good thing about copper is it it, it conducts heat quite well. Um, so I've wrapped around these two because they underneath this it, it looks like that. It's two wires coming then. It's wrapped around. Um, I've then done the same the other side, and I used a soldering iron you can't just use any old soldering iron you need uh, in my opinion a hundred watt soldering iron because this is a lot of metal to get hot um, and you, you really need some heat but what also you need to do is you've got to really clean it I mean you gotta get it clean the trick is getting it clean so I started, uh, I put a bit of rubbing alcohol onto the metal, then I got glass paper and I got it all shiny and then I put the alcohol back on again just to make sure there's no oils, especially off your fingers, um, there's no dirt, it's nice and shiny and clean, uh, wrapped the copper around it uh, when I made sure it was all as it should be. Um, bit more alcohol on it make sure that's got no grease off my hands uh, then I held on the soldering iron um, no I didn't I put some um, flux put some plumbers flux on there put the soldering iron on it let it heat up I mean really you know a few minutes then I got the solder and I dabbed the solder on and just let the solder melt 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 let the solder melt <laughs> sort it out let the solder melt into the copper and surrounding the uh, the metal and then I did exactly the same with the axle with the axle I turned it upside down like this that way can you see that yeah um, I've got a, a thing I use for gardening I can't stand up very quickly so I used that as a bridge and just laid this on top so it was this way up just laid it on top and um, wrapped some copper wire around it make sure it's all nice and clean and then just did the same thing again and then I don't know whether you can see it too well but I, I used some washers 
put some washers there and uh, put them uh, they're ready for the, the wheels to go on because it's going to rub against it you don't want it to catch so you put the wheels on and there you are uh, it's a bit wobbly um, but what I do need to do is uh, with the wheels I need to put um, a brass it didn't have to be brass but I might put a brass hub in the middle there just to give it a really really um, I wouldn't say tight fit as such, but a, a tighter fit than that. Um, and then what I will do is I will get some grub screws. There's a little collet you can get with a grub screw and then put them on the end there. And then the cardboard cone goes over the top and that's it. Um, I will not fit the um, undercarriage just yet because I've still got a lot to do with the fuselage so that's now ready it's made and when I feel like I need to put it on boom it goes on so there you are that's the undercarriage uh, for now I will put the collets in the middle of the hub off camera because I've got to see what I've got on the shelf and uh, make it all fit now I haven't got the collets well, actually I might have collets yeah I might have collets somewhere uh, and fit those on and there you go that's the undercarriage the gun okay so I'm going to show you all this before I paint it because it's going to be darn sight easier what I've used is um, three layers of 1 8 hard balsa so what I've done is I've cut out the centre section and then just laminated it either side to make up the body of the gun okay so you, you got you got the handle there the trigger uh, the mount and basically the body and I've used um, a cocktail stick or if some people call it a toothpick uh, two bits of metal there just sticking in into the back end of that now you're gonna want some sizes I guess so the length of the body not counting the rear handle is 45, 6, 7, 48 millimetres long. The width is 8 millimetres. And the body, its widest part, including the sight, is 15 millimetres at the butt end. And at the business end, it's 7, 7 mil. Okay, now I just got some uh, brass tubing. Size of this is eight mil, eight mil brass. Put some uh, bolts in the end and use a toothpick uh, to use as the barrel. Now, all I did this end was I just basically put the, the brass to the end, twirled it round so it made a circle and then just took the corners off so that just goes on like that and that's basically your gun. Now you can use um, a magazine, well you, need, you, know, you do need to use a magazine, you can use just use a bottle top if you wanted to. I'm struggling to get the right size bottle top and then I had an idea you know those felt pads you put under chairs so they don't screech on the floor? These things. Perfect. Just the right size. 22 millimetres. And they're self adhesive. How about that? You got yourself a machine gun. So, what I'm going to do, I'm now going to paint this up, okay? And we'll load up the magazine and see if it fires. <laughs> So don't go away, I'm just going to get some black paint and just go shh, 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 and see how it turns out. Okay, so just wait there. So, it's had the paint job. It's turned out, I think, okay. I mean, I'm not going to put loads and loads of detail into this because, you know, you, <laughs> the time you're going to see it is when it's on the ground and you've got the rest of the model to look at. So, 
at least we have a machine gun now. Um, I just want to have a look at this trigger hole here. Um, <laughs> what happened there? Oh, oh, oh my word. Oh, look at that. Oh, what a mess. Oh, I'm in trouble now.